approximately 700 grams of sweat an hour. Um, that's equivalent to um, a pint and a half an hour. And he needs to replace that volume of fluid if he's not to become dehydrated. Matt's drunk six pints in four hours. That's very good. But he's having to make a conscious effort to keep drinking. Thirst is a very poor indicator of fluid requirements. What tends to happen is people dehydrate by one to two percent of their body weight before thirst is triggered. So you shouldn't rely just on thirst in order to maintain your uh, water balance. Stuck in the desert with your water running out, you need to make sure you're doing everything you can to help people searching for you. Now the sun's going down, I can start to make a sign that can be seen from the air. This V-shape is internationally recognized as a distress signal, but you want to be seen day and night. I'm collecting some firewood so that I can make a couple of signal fires, back three, because in an emergency you do everything in threes if you can. I've got to be careful when doing this. Keep my eyes open for scorpions. The last thing I want now is to be stung. No rubbing sticks together now. Use what you've got, and the vehicle's fuel will save a lot of effort in my attempt to attract rescue. Now all I've got to do is wait for nightfall. It gets real cold in the desert at night. That's when one of these Arab jellabars comes in really useful. I feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you're stuck out here, you're bound to wonder if you could make it out on foot. After all, every day that passes is time running out. So the temptation to get up and go will be huge, but you must resist. But part of me has always wondered how far I'd get, and now I'm about to find out. If you haven't got a hat with you, it's vital that you improvise some sort of shade for your head. And for that, I've brought this piece of parachute nylon with which I can easily make an Arab-style headdress. I'll take that knot, place it at the back of my head, and gather the fabric, and then just wrap that around and tuck it in. Tuck the rest into my shirt at the back. It's only when you actually try to walk in a desert as arid as this that you realise just how difficult that task is. I've only been going half an hour or so, and already I realise that this litre bottle of water is actually just a thimble full. If I'm not to suffer sand blindness like the crew of the Lady Be Good, I need some way of protecting my eyes. And with the sun beating down, you've got to use whatever's to hand. Here we go, a pair of uh, raised sunbands. Perfect if I ever make it back to the King's Road. But none of this is really going to help me here. I'd be lucky to last more than a couple of days. Walking out of a desert requires an incredible amount of determination, resourcefulness, and most importantly, luck. As much luck as Bob Nelson had after he was shot down over the desert in 1942. <laughs> Bob managed to grab a few supplies before his plane blew up. Some tins of tomato juice, serve cool, a water bottle, torch and compass were all useful, as was benzodrine, an amphetamine provided to keep him going with little food or sleep. But his crepe-soled desert boots weren't really up to the journey ahead.
For seven days, the only living things he saw were flies. During the heat of the day, he rested, walking only at night, signalling forlornly with his torch to try and attract aircraft. He drank a tin of tomato juice and a little water each day, but pretty soon his liquid had run out. In desperation, he took all the benzodrine and walked through the heat of the day. It was a desperate thing to do, and eventually he passed out. He came to beside some telegraph poles, thinking that if he broke the line, it would attract attention. He cut several down, but even then, no one came. However, the empty petrol tins he found at the foot of the poles probably saved his life. With great resourcefulness, he cut them open. In the morning, condensation had left drops of water on the metal. Licking these was just enough to keep him alive, but after three days in the desert, time was running out. Then he had a stroke of luck. He spotted a camel train, which would prove to be his lifeline. A nomad with the camels gave Bob his first proper drink for days. As soon as the liquid hit his stomach, Bob suffered cramps, but he couldn't have survived without this assistance. The nomads looked after Bob and helped him recuperate. After a few days, fully stocked with water and with good directions, he set off alone into the desert once more. Don't forget this was the middle of the war, so all the time Bob was trying to evade capture and return to Allied lines. Along the way, he came across the burned out wrecks of vehicles and crashed aircraft, from which he took vital supplies. Eventually, after 18 days in the desert, Bob reached the German front line, which he simply walked through in broad daylight. But no man's land was a different matter. It was here that Bob's luck finally ran out. He was captured that night, just one mile from his own lines. But Bob Nelson's extraordinary story didn't end there. Two years later, he was one of the prisoners who took part in the breakout that became famous as the Great Escape. He was one of the few recaptured not to be shot. Maybe the Gestapo thought that he was related to his illustrious namesake, Admiral Nelson. Unlike Bob, most of us need rescuing to be able to return safely to food, shelter, and most importantly, a cold drink. One beer barman, please. Sadly, Bob died in 1999. He was one of the very few people who have ever walked out of a desert and survived. How did you get here? I'll tell you sometime, but where's my beer? Buy your own beer. So why do you walk? You know you're supposed to stay with your vehicle. Well, it looked like a really nice walk. Couldn't resist it. You're crazy. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Next week, the chills and thrills of the subarctic forest. 